I guess uh, our next speaker is Josh Judd from Warp Mechanics. Uh, Josh Judd has been a leader in the IT industry for over 20 years uh, in roles ranging from senior Unix admin to best-selling author to chief architect and chief technology officer. While pre-IPO employee at Brocade, he helped create the SAN industry. He wrote storage-related patents, invented award-winning products, and wrote numerous technical books on storage topics. For eight years, he's been CTO at Warp Mechanics, leading provider of commercially supported ZFS on Linux and Lustre ZFS appliances. Uh, and also uh, sponsor of last night's event. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, thanks to HGST for sponsoring last night's event. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Josh Judd. Push the button. Okay, so uh, I am continuing Warp's tradition of donating our sponsor speaking slot to a technical topic. Uh, this is only 15 minutes, so it's going to be an overview of this technical topic. If this turns out to be something you're really interested in doing, uh, stop by, give, give me a card, or go to the uh, Oak Ridge Luster Ecosystem event at which I have a longer speaking slot for the same topic. So I will get into much more technical detail <clears throat> in uh, uh, Hanover, Maryland, apparently. So at the end of July. <clears throat> So last year, I talked at the ecosystem event about data at rest encryption and how you could do this in an open manner without buying anything from Warp or anybody else, but using a software approach. And the software approach has the advantage of being, you know, free. That's always a plus, and it works with anybody's hardware, but it doesn't have the best possible performance characteristics, and being high performance computing guys, we sometimes care about that. So uh, particularly if you have an IOPS intensive workload uh, or are trying to encrypt your metadata as well as your data, the software approach may not be for you. The hardware data at risk uh, encryption method historically required very expensive proprietary hardware and vendor locked. You couldn't just take your encrypted data from an XYZ vendor array and move it easily over to a different vendor if you decided you didn't like your vendor. Uh, it was uh, you know, kind of hard to get your data back if the vendor <laughs> you know, screwed up. So uh, now we can use open standard based self-encrypting hard drives that don't have any performance penalty at all. In fact, uh, these drives encrypt all data all the time, no matter what. There is no unencrypted performance characteristic of them. On the other hand, you still have to be able to manage them. You have to not lose your encryption keys. You have to not forget how to unlock the drives. And Warp took a go at using all of the available open source tools for this, and uh, there were gaps. Or to put it another way, none of it worked. So. Uh, <clears throat> We found that uh, doing DIY, do-it-yourself tools, was uh, you know, an achievable thing. So we wanted to explain to y'all what it was we did, so you can do it too. And thus, once again, avoid buying things from me because apparently I'm the world's worst sales guy. Um, what we use as a reference for this is HGST, TCG, SAS, Helium, hard drives, and not helium SSDs, because helium SSDs isn't a thing. So <clears throat> um, thanks to our co-sponsor, HGST, for making all of this wonderful stuff possible. But TCG is an open standard. So you can get TCG hard drives from other vendors. Uh, you know, I don't recommend it, but you could. Uh, and uh, it would work exactly the same way. So there's a lot of advantages. I'm not going to read this at you, but uh, Basically, it goes fast, it's operating system transparent, uh, your application won't even know that you're doing this, 
Uh, it will work just like any other Lustre over ZFS system, assuming that you've set it up properly. Um, you just have to unlock the system when you power it on, and if you reboot something at some point, uh, well, if you reboot servers, you won't have to do anything. If you power cycle JBODs or jack hard drives, you have to unlock them once you uh, uh, get done doing that. But other than that, it works just exactly like any other Lustre over ZFS system. There's also the bulk data encryption or BDE standard. Uh, functionally, that can be made to work the same way, but you essentially have to write two completely separate management tools because BDE does things differently. So just be aware if you're trying to manage both SATA encrypted drives and SAS encrypted drives, you're kind of doubling your uh, headache. <laughs> so functionally, we said, what does the tool have to do? Uh, First, it has to notice if the drive supports encryption. If you send SAS encryption manipulation commands to a drive that doesn't support it, then you tend to do things like knock the drive over and it stops talking. So um, you, you will have to have some sort of a handshaking mechanism to figure out if the drive is going to support the encryption commands before you actually start sending them. Um, manage pens. The drives are not unlocked by full encryption keys. They're unlocked by relatively uncomplicated uh, uh, pen codes. But every single drive has one, or, or every single drive may have many. So you don't want to try to memorize thousands of pen codes, and you may not want to use the same pen code for every hard drive. Anyway, the point is the tool has to have some mechanism of collectively managing all of the drive pens under a master key um, so that you can type one sysadmin command when you do an initial power on with one password and the tool will do all the rest of it. <clears throat> Uh, it has to allow, once you've done that, for all directly connected servers to see the drives transparently. Uh, if, each dri if each server had to have human intervention every time it rebooted to type a password, this would mm, break high availability. If you had to not have a human involved and had the password uh, stored on your server's hard drive, this would, you know, kind of defeat the purpose of security, right? <laughs> so somehow a human has to type a password and it has to stay typed while the system is on and uh, only relock the drives when they lose power. Like if somebody tried to pull it out of a data center and walk away with it, you want it to be protected. Short of that, you want it to stay unlocked. <clears throat> uh, you have to be able to manage the pens when a drive gets jacked out to replace it. You have to be able to handle the lock status. Uh, if somebody pulls it out and then puts the same drive back in, that's subtly different than the replacing a drive case. And of course, you have to be able to pull the status to make sure that your drives are in fact in the correct lock state for uh, what your system's at. Anyway, um, th this is kind of a functional description of what the tool was supposed to do. This is how we approached implementing that functional spec. Um, I would say that Anybody implementing management of these tools probably should do what's on the last slide. This slide is just our, our philosophy, our choice. Um, first off, I'm a CLI guy. So there are certain things that we don't allow people to do to luster via our GUI. Um, you know, the, the, there is a school of thought that you want every function available in the GUI, and I respect that. We don't have format file system available as a button in the GUI. I, d I don't want the guy who formats a Lustre file system to be the same guy who can only use a GUI, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. Ideally, you format the file system once and it stays formatted, right? <laughs> or very rarely reformatted. So the same thing is true with Warp's encryption stuff. Uh, setting up encrypted drives initially should happen once ever in your system. Uh, even if you end up reformatting the file system once a week, you're still not going to have to redo the encryption. So. Uh, if, if you made it really easy for somebody to fiddle with the encryption by putting a big red 
you know, delete all my encryption keys button in a GUI, um, you know, they could lock you out of your system. So the the hypothetical uh, rogue admin who quits and tries to, you know, screw you on the way out the door, uh, I would like it to not be easy for him to do his, his work. So everything we do is CLI for encryption. Um, you need, we decided to store the large number of drive pens in a container file and then encrypt that container file. Uh, our tools can use any Linux utility to encrypt that file. So, you know, if you have your own preferred mechanism of encrypting the passwords, let's say, you can use that. Um, but, you know, you can use anything up to and including clear text. I just wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> uh, but by storing all the pins in a single file, you can back up that file. You can replicate that file to other warp nodes. Uh, you can distribute the encrypted keys very easily via any mechanism you can think of. It's not even a very big file. So um, now, if your system gets destroyed and you have to put in a new controller or four new controllers per rack, if everything has smoke coming out of it at the same time, you can still very easily have these uh, encrypted drive keys on a USB stick if you want. So you put in all new controllers, uh, you scan the drives, it goes, oh my, they're encrypted. You point it at the file you just restored, now you can unencrypt it. Uh, thus to avoid losing all of your data. <laughs> um, so our utilities all accept a single password. That password unlocks the encrypted file, and then the utilities take it from there. The utilities spray the keys over all the drives and you know, run the uh, annoyingly complicated low-level SAS commands to, to turn the drive's encryption up and down and so forth. <clears throat> and this way, if an admin quits, all you have to do is re-encrypt that one a uh, small master file. You don't have to re-encrypt all your data. Uh, the approach that I talked about last, um, last year, software encryption, uh, if, if an admin quit, they could potentially know the encryption keys for the actual drives. With this approach, they can't know the encryption keys for the actual drives themselves. All they can know is the master password for uh, unlocking. Um, rather than the actual encryption keys for the drive. So you won't have to re-encrypt your data, you only have to re-encrypt your keys. With Warp's approach to implementing the functional spec, uh, it's pretty simple to administer. Uh, you just initial power on your system, all TCG drives are encrypting by default, so all the data going on to the drives is encrypted. There's no way to not have it be encrypted. Um, <clears throat> and they look just like any other drive to the system at this point. They're not locked. All we do in order to enable encryption is tell the drives, if you get pulled out, if you lose power, don't unlock yourself, right? Um, so there, there, there isn't anything that we have to do to scramble the data on the drives. They come that way. Um, so you can immediately create file systems, start writing data, it's encrypted. Uh, at some point in the process, you initialize drive locking. Uh, we provide a single simple tool, WMSE disk, that says turn on the drive protection, turn off the drive protection, lock drive, unlock drive, check drive, lock status, that kind of thing. Um, so the third step on this thing, create pools in file systems, you can actually do that first if you want. Um, or blast, doesn't matter. <clears throat> so once you've got file systems, pools, sorry, pools then file systems, <laughs> uh, and you've turned on encryption, you test it. Completely power down everything, power it back up, and oh my, you can't access any of your data. Yay, just what I always like in a luster system. Cannot access any of my data. Um, at that point, you send a WMSE disk command, type in your password, then you can mount your file systems, voila, it works. 
And that's it. Uh, honestly, that's just the 10,000-foot uh, view of, of how it works. If you actually want to implement it, uh, if you want to see example code of you know, what goes on uh, in that WMSE disk tool or talk about how you could implement this in your environment, feel free to stop by our booth or send me an email or come to the uh, Oak Ridge ecosystem thing in July. And that is all. Uh, any questions on that before I retire from the stage? Not, unfortunately, permanently. That'd be nice, but no. Going once, going twice, going to get some coffee. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Josh.